Here's a recliner that'll make you look finer. Here's a look at the Super 7 Silverhawks Transformation Chamber Throne. Balance between crime-fighting Silverhawks and Monstar and his mobsters has the Limbo Galaxy on Razor's Edge, and Super 7's newest wave of Silverhawks Ultimates may just tip the scales of power. This highly detailed and intricately sculpted Ultimates throne is ready to power up your collection. Just before Monstar takes a seat, we're going to take a look at the Silverhawks throne set. Now, to be fair, I did sleep on this a little bit. I had the plan to pick this up, and I sort of just wasn't really as interested to pick this up right away, but I knew sooner or later the time would come that I would want to go and go looking for this, and then sure enough, that would be the time it would be sold out. And of course, then with the reminder of Silverhawks Ultimates Wave 1 figures coming out, which does finally give us the monsterized version of Monstar, I thought it would be a prime time to actually finally pick this up. I did actually grab this at, over on Entertainment Earth's website. If you guys are interested and would like to get this for yourself as well and have also been sleeping on it like I have, I definitely click the link down below in the video description. In the meantime, though, the throne itself is about eight and a half inches in height, or it's going to be about 22 centimeters high. Uh, as for its width, if we're looking at it, now you can either measure it from arm to arm, but there's actually technically a part that's behind it that's a little bit wider. I suppose we'll technically go with that from the end of what you may not be able to see to the other end of what you may not be able to see. The throne is actually nine inches in width, or it's gonna be, in this case, about 22 and a half centimeters wide. Of course, if we are gonna be looking at Monstar's throne, it probably would help a lot to bring in the Monstar ultimate figure that we've already had a look at. And smart, I feel, on Super 7's part to sell these separately. Not everyone's going to be fully all into the idea of then paying another $50 on top of the asking price of $54 for these Ultimate figures by including the two together. Again, probably one of the reasons why I, didn't, I wasn't as quick to jump on picking up the throne right away. I figured a lot of people probably aren't going to be picking up the throne and more so picking up the figures themselves. You know, speaking of the asking price of $50, which I think is what the throne is going for... I would have honestly paid the extra 30 maybe even $40 on top of that if they had found a way to devise the extendable arms that sort of reach around the throne when Monstar is obviously turning into his alter self. Now, obviously, you can take the figure. You're just going to bring the legs forward. Not that I need to show you guys a tutorial how to sit a figure, but we're going to just bend the knees like this, and then we're going to sit Monstar on top of the throne. You'll see, obviously, he's a little bit smaller in the throne but it's also going to be catering to the larger version of Monstar that we're going to be getting a part of the Silverhawks Ultimates figure line wave one. Obviously at this point, the moon, the rays of the Moonstar are going to be shining down. Moonstar of Limbo, give me the might, the muscle, the menace of Monstar. And of course, from there, he's going to transform into Monstar. Still one of my favorite transformations, even more so than Mumra, the ever living. I always loved that scene. But again, like he's a little bit smaller when it comes to the sizing of him sitting on the throne, because again, it's probably going to be accommodating a more wider frame. I can only hope that the robotic version of Monstar is going to be of a bigger size than what we're actually getting right here. Well, one thing also with Monstar is that he did have various different heads. Uh, the defaulted head was basically this one right here. But when it usually comes for me to display him on his throne, I like to go with this one more so because I think it fits better just before he's ready to turn into the robotic Monstar. We're going to move this figure to the side. Uh, one thing I did want to say, though, about the figure for the little time that I've actually had this guy as part of my collection, he has already started to develop looseness on the tops of his thighs. And he's actually gotten a little loose there on the elbows as well. So it's a shame that these figures are starting to develop looseness so quickly after getting these figures out of the box. Let's move Monstar out of the way. We're going to come back to, that, come back to him in a moment. Let's pick up, though, the throne room. And while it doesn't, again, have the reach-around arms, which, again, I maybe would love to see them do as a separate release, where essentially it would just be like a circular standee, and then, again, like the arms would then reach around it. You'll know exactly what I mean if you ever get the chance to see the transformation scene. He basically has these arms that reach around. And again, just before he transforms into Monstar. Picking, though, up the throne, it's actually a lot heavier than I expected it to be. It does seem to be obviously hollow. Hello? Come on in. Uh, this whole bottom section obviously is clearly a cover just to mask the fact that this is going to be a hollow base. In fact, you can kind of see how it's hollow here on the sides. But for as hollow as it may be, they're actually using fairly thick plastic. The plastic itself, I don't know if you can actually see by the way I'm squeezing it, does have a little bit of a rubbery give to it. But it's a fairly dense plastic that they ended up using here. 
It's got some really nice detailing done to it. Primarily, you can already see like the base color is kind of more of a lighter gray, but it gives them then a big chance to kind of add an airbrushing of like some darker grays and almost a little bit of a purple hue, a purple hue down the sides here. Uh, from the back, it certainly looks a little bit like the horns of a ram. And carrying over the, the motif of a ram, you can kind of see that there's almost a bit of a ram formation here in the front, where clearly these look to be more like eyes. Some nice decorative work that they've also got here on the side of the throne. But again, like the plastic that they used is pretty good. I would have been a little more disappointed, I think, if they had not put something on the bottom of it, where literally you've just been able to lift it up and see like just a completely barren wasteland of, of just empty plastic. I'm glad to see that they actually did put a base cover on the bottom of it. It certainly helps, I think, to also add a little bit of stability to it, too. Again, we've got some nice purple being made use of here in the middle section of it. And again, you've got some nice darker airbrushing of dark gray added in there as well. The decorative work also nicely added here to the top. It does feel like for the quality of what they put into it, I don't think I would say it's necessarily worth a $50 price point. Concern it really doesn't have, for obviously obvious reasons, it doesn't have any posability or anything along those lines. It's, it's essentially just a big molded piece of plastic. But I think it's handled well, although I don't think, again, it's probably worth the $50 price point that they were asking. I think essentially, I think a throne like this probably could have been easily released at even like $35 or $40, or heck, if you're going to be then taking the time to charge $50 for this thing, I think I probably would have then said, tack on another 20 or 10, tack on another 30 to have like the reach around arms to go around it as well. And of course, then we're going to go t take our Monstar figure once again. It's like we already did do this. Take the Monstar's legs, and then we're just going to fold the legs again, and we're going to prop them just to on top of the throne. The only thing missing again in this case is the fact that he has yet to transform and we don't have Yes Man standing along next to him saying, yes, boss, whatever you say, boss. You know, again, it's a nice looking throne. I think one thing that skins smart on Super 7's part is that they didn't right away package this along with Monstar because I think, first of all, a lot of people would have just looked at that and said, well, I don't want to pay $80. That's, that's probably what they would have asked for it. I don't want to pay the $80 to get a Monstar if he comes with a throne if I never really had any plans at all to display the figure with the throne. Smart then on their part that, they, again, they sold it as a separate piece. But I think the real thing is whether it's worth the 40 I think, it, again, from most of the online sites where this 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 listing is listed for, I think the throne is close to about $49.99, so a little shy of $50. Whether you would argue the point of $50 is really well worth it, considering when you think of, like, these ultimate figures being fully posable figures that have a ton of accessories, they're already at $54. Just to move over the throne so you can see that kind of the, the difference in price point. This guy essentially is $5 more than the throne that's next to him. The throne has no moving parts. It has nothing that really gives a gimmick or any feature that's featured with it. It's essentially just a big molded molded plastic chair. Is that enough, I think, for a $49.99 release? Maybe not. Maybe it could have been a little less than that. Maybe they could have also included some episode-specific accessories. Or not while they would have packaged it along with Yes Man. I think, again, including maybe the bendable arms or reach-around arms just as he's transforming into Monster would have been a nice touch. I don't mind if that was the case and they would have tacked on another 30 or $40 on top of it. I would have done that. I think by not giving anything else with the throne than just the throne itself and to know that it's essentially just hollow plastic painted as well as it is, I think maybe $50 might be a little too high. And maybe one of the reasons why not everybody is jumping right away to get this for their collection. Just a slight course correction. I did mention a couple of times in this review that the throne for the Silverhawks Monstar was $49.99 or about $50, making it $5 less than the Ultimate Silverhawks figures. That's not true. In fact, many of the online sites, even Entertainment Earth, where I ended up picking this up for myself, has it for $44.99 or $45. So it's $10 less not $5 less than the Ultimate Silverhawks figures. Even just to bring it back by $5, I still think that $45 might be a tad bit too high, considering that this is literally just molded plastic. There's nothing that really moves on it, and while it does look like a good-looking chair with some great-looking sculpting and equally well-painted, I still don't think it's worth $45, honestly. Maybe if they had included, again, those reach-around arms. Now, again, that would have added on a lot more than just $45 for, for an asking price. Or what they could have also have done as well is thrown in a couple of also episode-specific accessories that really didn't have a plan to be included with any of the other Silverhawks figures that if anybody was on the fence to get the throne like myself and said, yeah, you know what, I can wait on this just a little bit. No one's probably going to be buying the throne. You could then have said, okay, well, you know what? I don't want to spend the $45 for a throne alone, but considering it does have all these extra accessories, 
I might be a little more nudged in the direction of actually wanting to get the throne. I think Super 7 probably should have done that, not just to include the throne on its own. Smart still on their part that they decided to sell this separately from Monstar because I think it would have been even a harder pill to swallow by tacking on another $45 on top of the asking price for Monstar if your plan was only ever to display Monstar on his own and standing without the chair having him sitting or having him sitting inside the chair. But what do you guys think of the throne? Do you think it's a little too high of an asking price? It's still technically $10 less than an Ultimate Silverhawks figures. But still, at $45 for being just a big molded piece of plastic, do you think the asking price is a little too high? Let me know down below in the comment section. And again, if you guys are interested and have been sleeping on this one like I've been sleeping on this one, I did actually get this one over on Entertainment Earth's website. So I'll provide the link down below in the video description if you guys are interested to grab one for yourself. We are also, not that I've had the chance to get them yet, because again, they're, they're coming out in May, but we will eventually be looking also at Silverhawks Ultimates Wave 1 figures, which will also include Robotic Monster. So of course, we're going to be dusting back off the throne. And it's going to be coming back for that review. As I have a comparison, I'll bring in this Monster and I'll bring in the Robotic Monster from Wave 1. I'll show you guys how they both sit on the throne. Sounds good? Sounds good. If you guys enjoyed this video, one hit with a like. You guys are loving the content you guys are seeing and on board to see more. Then make sure you hit that subscribe button down below and that you're turning on the bell notification. As always, guys, thanks for watching. See you guys next time.